introduce a very special guest in our school today. Uh, he's an American hero, and um, as many of you know, he was the winner of the Boston Marathon last year after the uh, tragic Boston bombings. Uh, he was the first American champion to uh, win the Boston Marathon since 1983, which was a very big accomplishment at a uh, time when our nation needed it the most. Uh, at the age of 38, he was the oldest men's champion to win the marathon since 1931, which is another amazing accomplishment. Um, he ran the Boston Marathon, uh, inspired by the names of the victims of Boston bombings on his bib. And over and over again, he uh, repeated in his mind, Meb Strong, Boston Strong. So um, give a warm welcome for uh, Meb Kaplensky and hold up your signs. Thank you so much, it's a great honor to be here. Look at that picture, just to bring memories of what all started here in Hopkinton and to be able to pull the victory, you know, you have to have a cause to run for and in 2013, you know, it was a horrific moment for all of us that were watching or that were there. And for me, I just wanted to do something positive uh, in 2014. You know, I grew up in Eritrea where there was war. My dad has to walk 225 miles to save his life so he can have a better future for, if he make it safe, that is. Uh, but, you know, he has to be careful with the hyenas, lions, scorpions, snakes, you know, and soldiers. But he made it through and he looked after his kids. I didn't see him for five years of my life, from five to ten years old. But through hard work and getting two, three different jobs, he made it to Italy. And once in Italy, he lived, he, we connected after five years. And, you know, we came to the United States on October 21st, 1987. Not sure what the life will hold. Didn't speak English, didn't have finance. All we had was the clothes on our back and a lot of love for each other between the parents and the siblings. Um, parents told us, if you work hard, you're going to get great, great things. This is a land of opportunity. You have it. Don't waste it. My, we didn't have it. Your uncles don't have it. Your cousins don't have it. And in seventh grade, uh, the PE teacher said, if you work hard, you're going to get A or B. And then to run a mile, that is. But if I see you mess around and go for a round, you're going to get the NF. Well, I just wanted to support my parents. I want to run as hard as I can. And to get a t-shirt, to get an A in the class, and to get your picture in the gym, you have to run five minutes, I mean six minutes and 15 seconds. And I ran as hard as I can. I never ran before, I was a soccer player, but I ran at five minutes and 20 seconds. And that's when my God-given talent was discovered, and uh, he, he said, the PE teacher says, you're gonna be in the Olympians. You're gonna be in the Olympics. But bear in mind, when you didn't speak English, you don't know what the Olympics are. We didn't have TV growing up, we didn't have radio, or we didn't have running water or electricity. But through hard work, you know, I pursued my education, graduated from high school. You know, whose favorite is math class here? Who, whose favorite is math? Yeah? That was me, the guy that did the math. And who was, who, how many of you guys are on academic league? Do you guys have academic league here where you go out against other schools academically? I was one of those because I didn't speak English, but I could do the math really quick and they got me on the team. Um, but, you know, I made small progress. I worked hard and academically and then athletically. And then that earned me a full scholarship to UCLA. Uh, you know, my parents always thought you need to be in, in, educa in education to be able to I achieved those goals, and I was running too much, and getting tired. My mom is at one point, is like, when I went to college, it's like, maybe you should just do a focus on desk jobs like your brothers and sisters, you know? But in 2000, 
is of 1997 is probably the first time that I ever ever thought maybe a professional runner, and that's because I won four NCAA titles that year. But my parents, you know, voice I sound I hear them back of my head saying, you know, academics, academics, and I stayed another year and a half, finished my UCLA degree, and then I gave running the priority. Um, I made my first Olympic team in 2000 in the 10K, and then I made a personal commitment that I want to be able to bring a medal for the United States, and I did that in Athens. And then in 2008, when I was supposed to be my prime, I wanted to defend the title. That didn't happen because I had pelvic stress fracture during the trial, so I didn't go to Beijing. So I made my, after a year and a half therapy, I made my personal Olympic winning the New York City Marathon would be my goal. And bear in mind, when I can't even stand up the way I'm standing right now without support, crawling, if I wanted to go over the, to that wall, I have to crawl on my elbows and knees and get up and walk slowly like this. And came back a year and a half, I won the, the New York City Marathon. And, you know, dreams do come reality, but they take time. Sometimes it might be days, sometimes weeks, sometimes years, sometimes even a decade. And in 2012, I made my, my third Olympic team. And at one point, you know, I was, it was in London. I was struggling. I already won a medal. I was thinking of dropping out. But when you wear that USA jersey, just like you guys wear your uh, high school jersey, you think about the time and commitment, the support that you get. And when I was wearing that USA jersey, I say I wanted to stop. And people often ask me, do you enjoy the scenery? I don't, because I'm going by pretty quickly through that. And uh, I thought about dropping out in London. But I'm like, no, our country did not send me to here to drop out. I was 20th place or 21st place, worked my way up. New goal, I just want to get to the finish line. And I want to pass a few people and then make a new goal. And then about 5K left, Coach Larson, my coach, pointed six fingers. So I moved from 20th or 21st to 6th place. And I could see, I was right next to the Japanese. And I could see one more guy up there with a green jersey. I'm like, I got to catch that person. And the reason being because a lot of times our sports get an allegation for drugs. So I'm like, if I catch that guy, he's in fourth place, I'm going to, eventually if they get caught, I'm going to be in third place. I'm going to get a medal. So, <laughs> so that was my motivation to push hard and end up getting fourth place. Sometimes it's about the medals, but what you do day in, day out to give you motivation. By finishing fourth at the Olympic Games, I thought, I could win Boston, so I wanted one more shot at Boston. And I signed up for the 2013, but because of injury, I didn't start the race. And uh, I was a spectator in 2013. I was there at the finish line for four, four hours and missed it by about seven, seven minutes or so. And, you know, it was horrific. A lot of people got touched with what happened. We can't get their lives back. We can't fix the people that have been injured mentally, physically. But I wanted to do something positive in 2014. I wanted to change the world and see something positive. And, uh, you know, you can dream it, you can want it, you can have the desire, but everything has to come together. And with the Boston Strong slogan, I want to give them Mev Strong. My goal was to win, podium, or run a personal best. And, you know, to come here in Hopkinton uh, last year was pretty emotional, you know, moment of silence trying to take it in and trying to why are you here and you want to get there as much as you can to this to the finish and I saw signs on the streets Boston strong I'm like Meb strong I had the victims names on my bed just to draw inspiration just keep pushing because the mayor running the marathon does hurt that is it's grueling but when you're running greater than yourself then you got to be able to dig deep and digging deep for me was came in mile seven you know Mile 16, from 15 to 16, remember I ran my all out 7th grade 520 mile. That just became a 430 mile 16, with still 10 miles to go. But when you're doing for greater than yourself, for the nation, for Bostonians, and for the United States, and for the international, you gotta do it. And I remember start hurting pain pretty bad, I just ignore the pain, ignore the pain, ignore the pain. And you know, coming with 5K to go, which is three miles left, I see somebody on my shoulder. I've been leading this race for a long time. Now I'm about to get caught. Don't make it happen. You keep digging. But I 
three things. You got to reassess and make new goals. So the new goals became, should I slow down, try to solve to make it a kick at Boylson? But mentally, if he catches up to you, then you're defeated because he has the edge. And then I'm like, well, trying to maintain the gap or trying to extend the gap. And that's what I did. And plan, plan, plan A did not seem feasible. I just said, no, you can't do that. And then coming point to point course, it's hard to look back. If you have a corner, so you can look and see where he is if he, if he closes the, close the gap. But coming to Hereford, making the right turn was the only point where you can make a move. And mentally, for, as an athlete, you just want to say, push the finish line as hard as you can, almost to, by the time he turns, make it say what happened, expand the gap and come into Wells. And what I wanted to do in 2014 was just do something positive. I just chant USA, USA, and became the first American to be able to win the victory. But it's not about winning, but doing it for greater than yourself. Work hard, discipline, commit, and perseverance because I was two weeks shy of my third, 39th birthday. That my dream to win the Boston Marathon came a reality. And it happened on the most important day where we needed the victory for Americans because you know, what happened in 2013 should never happen, should never have occurred. We can't get the lives back, but I hopefully with my victory, we was able to expedite the healing process that we're still working on to be the best that we can. I'm so honored to be here to be able to share my story of run to win. It doesn't mean getting first place, but to be the best that you can be in anything that you do. And I know that 520 mile that was planted seed in seventh grade, I was the, meant to be a runner after the Boston victory. Thanks so much. So we're gonna open it up to questions and ask uh, just a Q&A session if you want. Uh, students, just throw a hand up and we'll uh, relay the question up here to Meb and uh, he'll give you a, a great answer. I My next goal, the question is what my next goal. My next goal is to be here on April 20th and defend the title. Oh. That's my next goal. Uh, and I hope to see you guys there. I'm very excited. I'm healthy and strong. And uh, personal goal beyond that is hopefully try to make my fourth Olympic team on uh, February 13, 2016, which is less than a year away. And, I'll be 40, and can I chat, can I be at the Olympics when I'm 41? That's the personal goal that I have. Uh, I'm not really a closer distance runner. Do you, have, do you run anything like 400 to 300 in that time? Yeah, um, you know, part of my training, I do 400s, uh, done 300s, I've done 200s, but uh, a lot more of those, and instead of just one all-out race, I've done the closest, shortest race I ever did was 800. And uh, that was 153 for the 800. And uh, 400, I think, is probably 52 is my PR. And I've done 200, uh, 27 usually. And then they do, you know, you work out, you know, 35 or so, and then work my way to, you know, 28s, 29s, and those are my splits. And uh, training, even now, I still do it before, like the last week before the Boston Marathon. I like to time myself for the 400 and 200, and just be. Just in case it comes to a kick. <laughs> Any more questions? Yes. Yeah, so expanding on that question a little bit, what's your training, your day to day training routines? The day to day training is uh, pre grueling. I train seven days a week, sometimes twice a day. So I, I train, I tell people, do you run it? I tell them I'm a runner. They're like, do you train every day? I'm like, I run 12 times a week. Like, what? You do twice? And I, that's what I do day, morning and afternoon, but the mileage varies from anywhere from 15, maybe sometimes easy days are 10, but 15 to 20 miles a day, which is about you know, 120 to 130 miles a week. But to be a champ, you know, in high school, how many track athletes are here by any chance? Woo! All right. And, uh, so don't get, don't, don't get discouraged and go 120 next week, okay? <laughs> <clears throat> well, 
when I was in high school, I used to be 25, 35 miles when I was a freshman, maybe 35 to 40 my junior, junior, sophomore and junior year, and the highest I ever did in high school, one week was 56 miles a week, so, but now sometimes I run 27, what I used to do in a week, I'm doing it in two hours and 45 minutes, and in training, so, just small progress, and listen to your body, listen to the coaches, and be able to just, you know, pick on the right when you want to do really well, sometimes you have to train through races. Uh, what do you do to mentally prepare yourself for a marathon? What I do to mentally prepare for a marathon is I do a lot of visualization. In high school and college, I didn't have that. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you a story. My NCAA title, 96 in Eugene, Oregon. I'm running the 5K. As a freshman, I finished, I believe I was fifth. And I'm like, I finished fifth as a freshman. I was a, and I think I could win it. And I stayed up all night visualizing the race, uh, how I'm gonna come across and that. But you, what you need to do is visualize if you, whoever that competition is gonna be, visualize that weeks out, maybe even become a month, maybe when you do it in preseason. What do you wanna accomplish? When you talk those thoughts of uh, what your goal is and how you, you know, you, I, there's a, in San Diego, I live in San Diego, there's a two poles that's a, it's a sign to the zoo. And I imagine that the New York City minute, the New York City finish line, I imagine that the Boston finish line, I go between them every time just to know that, okay, I'm thinking this, sometimes I might pick up the race or sometimes I go harder, but it's not the finish line, the finish line, but when you go through that on route of your run, visualize what you want to accomplish. Getting back to your uh, training, with 100 plus miles a week, what's your average daily caloric intake to maintain that? You know, the color intake is varies. When I was in high school, I ate a lot. <laughs> when I was in college, I even ate a lot more because in the dorms, you know, everything's available. Let me try the lasagna, let me try the pasta, let me try the <laughs> spaghetti or whatever. But as I got older, I got definitely cannot do that. My metabolism has slowed down. And uh, carbohydrate the night before, harder runs, whether it's intervals or tempos, which is race pace, or recovery is protein, and also eat much more periodically, snack a lot instead of eating big proportion. And sometimes, you know, I was at a New York Cup yesterday and they interviewed me, what do you do before you eat? I'm like, I drink 32 ounce of water to tell my stomach is full before I eat dinner. So after the gym workout on my way home, I just drink that 32 ounce water, so to tease it that I'm almost full because as a runner, you run 120, 130, you have that appetite, and, but as you get older, you gotta watch out what you eat. Yes, go ahead. Have you ever had a day where you don't feel like running? Like, how do you keep yourself like, in the spirit of like, You know, today was one of those days. <laughs> It said 22 degree, but feels like nine degree. <laughs> and I just came from the warm of uh, San Diego. I'm like, but you have to train because somebody else is training harder than you. And I was fortunate enough to have two guys from the BAA to accompany me, my runs. So make an appointment or make somebody meet you because then you have to show up. But also know that the hardest part of training is Getting, putting your shoes on or put whatever gear you have on for all different sports, get it there. Once you get there, you're gonna do more than you anticipated, but like for me, running-wise, putting the shoes on, getting at the door. You know, I live in Mammoth Lakes. I know you guys get a lot of snow, and sometimes we get two feet of snow in one day, and it's like, ah, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if I could do this, but as soon as you get out, you'll be able to do it, and just, you know, know that somebody else otherwise is training harder, so, be encouraged to get out and you know bundle up. You know the wind was a factor today. It's not the temperature, but when it's wind, it's tough and it makes it difficult. Uh, what was going through your mind when you crossed the finish line and realized that all that hard training has paid off? It is very difficult to put it in perspective of what was going in my mind when I finished the finish line because throughout the race you're thinking about I think I got it, I think I got it, and then. You never got it until you get 
the chest, your, uh, the tape patch is your chest because it can cramp up, it can be so many things. But as soon as it touched my, the tape touched my chest, my wife went there to greet me. All I could say is, thank you, God, for giving me this opportunity to lead, to lead the 36,000 people down, allow me to be the first American to win. I know my ch life has changed forever, but it was just an epic moment, epic finish to be able to pull it off because I've been wanting to win the Boston. It's not for lack of trying. I have the desire, I have the want, but sometimes your dreams and reality meet, and that's what happened to me, and it's an amazing experience. That's an excellent question. Is I'm a competitor guy, I have to compete. Um, but after last year, you know, 2013, I was signed up to be New York City my last marathon because of Hurricane Sandy and because of what happened with the bombing. I decided to extend my career, but those things did cross my mind. But you know, I always say run to win doesn't mean getting first place by getting the best out of yourself. And I still believe my best days are still there. If, if I won New York and medal and could have said yes at that, but I still believe what I do in training and practice. We gain confidence through training, what we are able to do and what not able to do. And I'm a very realistic guy and I, I had a shot of winning the Boston Marathon and, and that's why. Why do I want to keep going after winning that? Because I feel believe that the sport has done a lot for me and people will get inspired by what I do, and I want to help my, for the record, my career has finally been fulfilled, and the captain was the Boston Marathon. That was the only thing that was missing on my resume, but now, finishing fourth at New York last, the fall, and hopefully defend the title or finish at the podium is still a great accomplishment, but work hard, but these days are also meant to be easy. And you make, I make a lot of sacrifice, whether it's nutritionally, away time from family. Why? Because as an athlete, you only have this gap. You can't come back in 15 years, hey, I want to go back and do it. No. As a running, uh, this is the ample opportunity as in high school. What do you want to accomplish? This is the best time of your life. Enjoy that process, and you're going to go out and do great things. But whoever you're sitting next to, you know, they're going to have their own life. You're going to have your own life. But I hope you guys keep in touch and say, hey, you know, I'm doing this, I've, I've done this, and be connected with, your, with, with, you, with you guys and get the best out of yourself, and that's the most important thing. Any other questions from anybody? Yes, I'm oh, sorry, Molly, go ahead. No, I know you probably run a lot of different distances, but what do you find so special about the marathon if you wanted to go back to the marathon, especially considering how long it's really going to be? Molly, that's the, uh, <laughs> you know, I love the distances, I love the 5K, I love the, uh, the mile, I love the 10K, but marathons, my first marathon was in 2002, and my, first, my parents were there watching the race, it was 38 degrees in New York, and I went for the win, and did a win, I finished ninth, and I missed, I ran 212.35, missed by 35 seconds, the Olympic qualifying time, and I was disappointed, and I was in pain, I hit the wall, and my mom was like, no more marathons. <laughs> and I said myself, I said, first and last, I don't want to do any marathons, but I guess the body does forget. And uh, yes, they're grueling and painful, but I love the training, I love the process of how you get there. You know, yes, after a marathon, hard run, I'm gonna be hurting for four or five days. I don't, sometimes I don't recover for two weeks, just, I have to go down the stairs, I have to go backward. What, I'm like, why am I doing this? But, you know, you love it because you want to ac accomplish the things that you want to have accomplished. And it takes, I've done 20, 21 marathons, all, only four of them I have won, but the others have taught me the very important lessons, the process, what is to be a marathoner. And 
you know, as long as you condition, you can recover faster. But if you're struggling and injury, it can be it can be detrimental. Yes. What's your favorite part about running? Like your favorite aspect and all that kind of stuff. My favorite part of about running is setting goals and then setting those goals you want to achieve them. I usually write them down and or I send them to people. And once you put it in writing, I'll tell people, well, you better do it because I'm saying right now. I'm, I'm not just saying I'm going to defend my title, but every day I'm thinking about those. And I love the process where you go outside, you sweat. I love to stretch afterward. I wouldn't just run and call a day. And I love, you know, there's so many people besides my sponsors, people who volunteer their time and energy to help me be the best that I can be. So people are investing and companies are investing in me. And I got to give them my A, my a game. I got to give them my best. And if I win, they win. If I, if I don't win, it's one man's sport, but at the same time, for that day. But behind the scenes, there's so many things people help you when you get inspired to get the best out of yourself. It's great to see you again. <laughs> um, you know, for any person that's doing the marathon, it's all about patience. And for the first timers in Boston, it's all about patience. Boston tests your patience because it's a little bit downhill from Hopkinton down, and then you think, oh, everybody's excited, it's downhill, you feel great, everybody's have the energy. But if you don't run your own race, you're in trouble. And I those I not made the mistakes in two thousand six. In two thousand six I went out so fast I ran one oh two forty four for the halfway and I looked at my watch and I'm gonna be it's gonna be a good day for personal best or it's gonna be a long day. Let me tell you it was a long day. <laughs> I ran one oh seven second and a half and it was a pain. I wanted to stop but the crowd is so fascinated that Oh, USA, 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 I yeah, were wearing USA jersey, they can be going and finish third. But just be calm, be yourself. As an elite athlete, it's tough to run your own race, probably out of the 20 marathons that I have done, or 21 marathons now. Boston is the only race that I did, my, that I ran my own race, because it is very difficult as an elite athlete, because somebody makes a surge, you have to cover it and who it is. You have to do your homework, who, who that person is, what their strength, what their weakness is. But as an average runner, they can have a watch and look at their watch and say, you know what? I'd rather run slower for the first half and pick it up rather than getting picked up by the van <laughs> or by other people passing you because their mind changes a lot. Passing people versus getting passed. So run your own race. Say uh, a few words here on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Thank you. Now, on behalf of the Board of Selectmen, I'd like to say welcome, welcome to Hopkinton. And thank you so much for being here. I hope you understand how much your presence means. Last year on Patriots Day, our town swelled from a population of 16,000 to the size of a small city. Not all the runners are from Hoppington. We hosted 36,000 runners and thousands of spectators. This town has a tradition of doing whatever it takes to host the runners for a day, and sometimes more, and ensure that they have a good start to their race. Volunteers, residents, and professionals work tirelessly together to make this happen. Last year was different from years past. 
It was our chance to show the world that our way of life will not be deterred. Our freedoms will not be intimidated. It called upon us to ensure that this race in this town would not shy from adversity. Each year we welcome runners and spectators from many nations, and the Kenyans will always hold a place in our hearts as humble champions that still take the time to enlighten our children. The last year was different, and last year was special. An American who emigrated to the United States, an American who has faced potentially career-ending adversity, and yet stayed the course, became the champion of the Boston Marathon. Your heart and your victory speak to us all, and you represent us now. You are our champion now. And I would like to present you with this proclamation designating you as an honorary citizen of Hopkinton. The Board of Selectmen hereby recognizes and congratulates Member Tom Meb Keflezi, Keflezi, the 2014 Boston Marathon winner and first American to win the marathon men's race since 1983. As an honorary citizen of the town of Hopkinton, Massachusetts, signed under the hand and seal on this 17th day of March 2015. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys have a special heart, place in my heart as Hopkinton. I won the marathon, but it all starts here. And without you guys hosting us, the 36,000 people, and year in, year out for 118 years, 119 years, it's amazing. Coming here uh, on October 21st, 1987. My family, my parents, my siblings to know what to expect, what the future holds. But through hard work, you know, we tried to go to Sweden, we tried to go to Canada, it didn't work out. But the United States welcomed us and to be able to, you know, I've been getting recognition, Mel Kavlesky Day, but to be an honorary citizen of Huffington, it's a great pride. Um, you know, I'm going to be thinking about you guys. I hope to come visit you guys more often, be able to do, see you guys be the, the leaders of the, of the town, of the city that you guys here do, and be the best you can, you know. People remember Hopkinton as the original place for the Boston Marathon, and you guys make us welcome and make a difference, and I am so honored to be associated with you guys. Thanks so much, and may God bless you, God bless Hopkinton. <laughs>